the producers and distributors of Tech AV welcome you to this introductory program on the subject of geared reduction units. During this program, you will be familiarized with the basic principles of gears, specifically their usage in performing speed reductions, which is vital to the operation of many industrial plants. So, let's begin as we first discuss the need for reduction and the basic principles involved. By taking even a quick look round most factories or production plants, you will no doubt notice just how many electric motors are used. Electric motors are the most usual source of power for most machinery and in many plants the motors are of a fixed speed type operating on three-phase alternating current. In order to produce useful torque or kilowatts of power, AC motors have to have relatively high spindle or shaft speeds, most often too high to be coupled directly to the machinery which they power. Between the motor and the machine, there is most usually a reduction device, which converts the AC motor's shaft speed to the desired speed required by the input shaft of the driven machine. The term reduction simply means a slowing down in revolutions per minute between a driver and a driven shaft. The term geared reduction means that the process of reduction is made via the use of gears of one kind or another. Other methods of reduction include drive belts and roller chains. Many processing operations are driven via a combination of methods, often through drive belts and then into a geared reduction unit. Here, the geared unit supplies a partial reduction between the power source and the driven machinery. Sometimes a reduction process is accomplished using open gears as we see here. More commonly, you will see reduction units that are fully encased. We refer to these as closed reductions. There are various designs of gear types used to create reducers and you will need to know how to identify each correctly. The simplest of gear designs is the spur gear. Spur gears are mostly used for small drives, including many domestic devices. A more usual industrial gear type used extensively in reduction units is the helical gear. The example shown is called a single helical. You can see, when compared to a spur type gear, how the helical gear's teeth are offset at an angle. This feature offers greater strength and less noise in operation than spur gears. Larger reducers may include double helical gears. These gears offer great strength and, due to the opposing angles of the teeth, operate without side thrusts which do occur with single helical gears. Typically, reduction units are designed to provide compactness and simplicity. However, when the motor, reducer and driven machinery are all set in a straight line, considerable space is often needed. To solve this problem, many users prefer to install an angle drive reduction, meaning that the input motion is diverted through the gear system to provide an angular change of direction which is normally 90 degrees. Such a reducer is called a right angle drive reduction. One method used to create an angle drive is through gears called bevel gears. A very popular angle drive and one which you will see again in this series is the worm and wheel type, often simply called worm drives. The action of the worm drive can be seen clearly here in this model. A screw thread called the worm shaft acts as the input. Motion via the screw action is transmitted into the worm gear. The output shaft, being the axis of the worm gear, provides the 90 degree change in the power flow direction. We have now looked at those gear types most usually encountered in reduction units. After the break, we'll be looking at how reduction processes are created.